It was the city sunken under the sea. Feature designer is Devan, who is much more close to the real elements of the game. Quirky relationships I have created in Sims. I knew I am being slow and the outcome wasn't what the game deserved. Hi, I'm David and I'm working on indie game The Book of Aru. This video might be a bit different to the last one we have uploaded, as it was a development vlog and this one is going to be more of a video essay or a reflection on my thoughts. But if you are going to like this video, I still encourage you to check the other one as well, as it offers a very interesting and less abstract insight into how small indie teams work. I also planned to make this one a bit shorter, but hey, I had a lot to say, so I hope you will have a lot to listen to. Well, to the point, what is this video going to be about? I will split it into two main parts with a few important subparts. These two main parts are how does a game designer enjoy video games and how a game designer enjoy making video games. Even though I assume the second part about game creation might be what interests you more right now, as it is less known to you, I feel like I should start with revealing a bit about myself, about what I enjoy and what I appreciate. Because through comparison on something we both have experience with, you can figure out whether your feelings would be the same about something you have probably zero experience with, which is the case with the stuff I will be talking about later on. But please, really please, I would love to debate with you on the subject of this video. I think there is a lot to be said and as this topic is highly subjective, every opinion has a value, no matter if you are a player or a developer. It would be really interesting to see if some of you are experiencing the same things as I do. And it might be even more interesting to see if someone is going through something I don't even know people can feel. If you will talk to me, I will talk to you back, promise. So how do I play and enjoy video games? Am I an indie games simp? who, despite with triple A titles, because I alone am an indie game designer, no. As you can imagine, I am not keen on a specific genre. What I play goes from indie niche games such as Machinarium across triple A titles like Assassin's Creed series, racing games like Burnout, CRPGs like Divinity 2, Battle Royale multiplayer games to old schools like Might and Magic 6. And who did not play Minecraft, right? So, as you can see, the spread is quite wide and there is still a lot I haven't mentioned. You might be thinking there is no connecting line between these games and gameplay-wise, there really isn't. But all my favorite games have one in common. They can suck me in the way that when I look back on playing them, I don't remember myself playing the game by my desk with my hands on the keyboard. What I remember is being in the game itself, walking through an imaginative world with an uncanny feeling that this is the reality right now. No matter what the genre is, no matter where is the camera positioned, no matter what's the gameplay or graphics, no matter how complicated the story is, when the game is immersive enough, I will have a good time. So the main priority to me is the atmosphere the game is set in. And when the atmosphere is lacking, playing the game is just an empty experience. What I understand as an atmosphere is a connection of all game parts together in a way that it creates a believable, cohesive and mainly unique distinct unity. It goes from colors and music to story setting and game mechanics. Where desaturated colors can work in horror platformer, it would hardly work in an easygoing humorish co-op games. Atmosphere is not about using only good ingredients, it's about using those ingredients which won't spoil the rest of the meal and make you forget about them specifically, as what you will eat is pure harmony. I love mystical surroundings of Mojave Wasteland as everything there from creatures and locations to sounds and character moods sits so well together and I believe it. I love all quirky relationships I have created in Sims. I love how I walked across whole Greece in Titan Quest. It doesn't matter that Sims language is gibberish 
and mythological lore in Titan Quest isn't accurate. But because how everything else is delivered, I believe this is exactly how it works in its universe. It wasn't the simple story of Bioshock what made me enjoy the game. It was the city sunken under the sea, the ominous feeling of isolation. And it wasn't the enhanced graphic of Bioshock Infinite. It was the ave I was in from being part of this weirdly religious city in the skies. But sadly, I grew old. And being immersed like this is not as easy as it was before. My brain is much more rational, I am unable to relax so freely and I also lack the time. So my priorities shifted a little. I basically cannot sit and play 6 hours straight, which some games require. I also doesn't have the certainty that I will be able to finish 200 hours long game. Being that said, usually games I play now must be story free, they must be short term rewarding, the gameplay must be immediately hooky and stress relieving. In that case, roguelikes being an optimal choice. I now need my games to refill my energy, but unfortunately, the games I enjoy the most require an energy to be spent on them, not the opposite. And there is also the thing I call disenchantment. I don't only like games, I also like movies and film industry. In middle of my adolescence, I started learning about movies in a more elaborate way than just reading reviews about them on the internet. I started learning specific camera techniques, story compositions, type of roles, etc. I attended a few filmmaking courses and I read a few books. And it was then when I realized I irreversibly damaged movies for myself. Since I started to understand what's behind the movie, I focused more on that itself than what's going on on the screen. My mind wasn't able to separate itself from the fact that the cinematographer is now using grey detail from below to induce a feeling of dominance and fear. And yet, appreciating how smart I am that I see through all of this, what I didn't felt was the fear and dominance. I felt nothing. I was just in my brain, understanding everything, experiencing nothing. Scenes which were tense and emotional to the rest of the audience, were just a compilation of many different technical parts to me. The magic of being drawn into the story did not work for me. Watching a movie was a pure pursuit to understand the craft. And even though understanding it all, being able to crack the mystery of director's intentions was a good feeling, I have been robbed from what's most important about watching a movie. Solving a movie puzzle? or living another life for two hours. Both can be enjoyable, but you tell me what sounds better. And even though my fears that this won't ever change back luckily didn't came through, watching movies will never be same again to me. I now again can be drawn into movie plot strongly, but just not as deeply as I used to. There still will be part of my brain present telling me how this mysterious effect was made, destroying my thrill from the unknown. And coming into game industry, I was facing the decision whether I want to undergo the same with games as well. I knew that if I start making games, playing them will be forever different to me. And I can tell you, it is. Where I was amazed before by programmed magic. Now I see simple steps needed to be done to achieve the outcome visible in the game. So if you love something and never want it to change, don't try to understand it. And I don't think that applies only on games and movies, but overall on everything. Relationships, love, life. Some things are there just to be experienced, not understood. But don't worry about me, I still enjoy games, just differently. I still can get surprised by what some other developers can come up with. I still can have fun playing hack and slash RPG and when I'm lucky enough I can disappear from my brain and live in a fantastic world of Wizard the Tamriel. Ok, I hope you understand me better now and more importantly I hope that you understand how I treat and perceive games better. With this newly gained knowledge let me tell you how I enjoyed creating games. 
again, before I fully kick off with this chapter, I want to give you a bit of context to what I do. I think you couldn't fully appreciate my commentary on things I do without knowing what these things are, obviously. My work position is widely known as game designer, but in the last video I mentioned that in fact I am a more of a feature designer and what I like to call myself time to time, mostly to boost my ego, is a game director. So what is the distinction between these three terms? Personally, I think the term game designer sits somewhere above the other two. It is more vague and as such it more of includes both of the other terms, rather than being on equal level to them. Game director and feature designer are much more specific positions. Where there is usually only one game director on the team, there can be many feature designers. Director is someone who has responsibility for and supervision over the full content of the game. He is the one who should ensure the original idea for the project is followed correctly and no element deviates from the rest of the development. On the other hand, feature designer is the one who is much more close to the real elements of the game and iterates on them. On example, Feature designer is the one who comes up with very concrete ideas to combat mechanisms, monster actions, game economy systems and more. It can go from the smallest details, like how fast characters should walk and run, to very complex designs, for example a full-blown reputation system, sources of reputation, its application, metrics, way of communicating the in-game facts about reputation to the player, etc. Game director is the one who will assign these tasks to many feature designers on the team. He will communicate what these designs should deliver to the game. He is also the one who will say the design got out of hands. If a feature designer of a slow tactical game comes up with a fast attack ability, which fits better to some kind of hack and slash game, game director is the one who must say it cannot be used. And sometimes even the smallest detail, like how fast character will run, must be supervised by game director. Where an ability to run fast in a horror game would take down from the needed tension, slow movement in action-packed FPS game would ruin the whole game dynamics. Well, back away from the theory. It's fun to be both of these positions at once. Often I must be the one supervising myself and sometimes I must be the one arguing with myself on the ideas which doesn't seem quite right. Luckily, I still have my colleagues and they can always tell me their opinion when I should receive it. So how do I enjoy the things I just described? Overall there are two strongest emotions. It fills me to the brim with joy because what I do is important, has an impact and is somewhat a dream of mine. Secondly, it's stressful as heck. Being the one who can lead the game into the oblivion, having the responsibility over every detail in the game, knowing that if the game is boring or unsuccessful is mostly fault of my wrong decision making, well, it's a lot to take in one person. But aside from this stress, I cannot imagine a better fitting job I could be doing. Being a designer on a small team leads to a very common shifting of my duties. Some weeks I spend by writing complicated system designs, some days goes into video editing and some months I spend in Unity Editor building creative solutions to level design. As I can imagine, this unstable workload could be an idea of a true horror to some. To me, it's something I need in my life. I hate monotony. Doing something on repetition can bring me existential thoughts very easily and very fast. So changing my obligations is a lovely gift to me. If I should be specific, there are obviously some parts which I enjoy less and some parts which I enjoy quite a lot. I am very imaginative person and I love to be creative and to tell stories. To me, video games always felt like a strange medium to tell stories with, in a good way. Where movies and books are very strong storytelling medium, what they miss to video games is the possibility of interaction with the depicted world. But it's not exactly the interactivity I love the most, it's the possibility to tell stories in other ways than just by words and pictures. Thanks to that interactivity, 
I'm a strong supporter of telling the story through level design outside of texts and cutscenes. It always feels so rewarding when player participate on story progression with his hands on the keyboard instead of being just a silent observer. Breaking down the fuses on a dam with your hands and then seeing the whole evil camp to be flooded down while still being able to move, shoot and help others feels so much better than just pulling a lever and then being presented with the outcome through short video. In the first scenario, player knows he made the important move in story progression by defeating the bad guys, not the developer team who composed a short video about it. The participation, the impact of one's actions. But hey, I got a little carried away again. What I wanted to say. Anytime I get my hands on something which will speak directly to the player, I enjoy doing it. Because I almost mystically feel how connected I'm going to be with him across the time. And knowing that what I do, any detail, weapon attack, single secret room, skill perk, can become someone's favorite game feature brings me excitement. And if there would be only one person, probably someone young and still open to personality change, whose life would get impacted by our game, that would be the only reward needed for all my striving. What I am having hard time enjoying are moments when I am rushed to do something complicated in what I am not really confident just yet. And doing this under an energy deprivation without enough of mental strength can be very daunting. To name something concrete, in the beginnings, to me, this was enemy AI creation. I had to work with nodes in very unfamiliar environment with unfamiliar features on something which is very important for the game, probably one of the most important components in fact. I knew I am being slow and the outcome wasn't what the game deserved. This awareness made me do things with even more anxiety. But I had to clench my teeth and continue, try again, redo, continue. And then face the necessary feedback of my team on something I was struggling with the whole time, suspecting the feedback won't be the best. Luckily, it's getting better over time and now I am even looking forward to work with nodes in Unity. But yeah, this situation sucks. But even then I can appreciate them as they put me in front of a challenge, something new, something different. And what gamer wouldn't appreciate a good challenge? And with this weirdly uplifting message, I think it's a good time to wrap it all up and end this video. So did you learn something new what might maybe help you in the future? Or do you have the exactly same experiences as I do? And is there something you disagree with me on? Tell me. If you will, we will talk soon. If you want, it's okay, as we will see each other soon in next video. Until that time, enjoy the most important game we all are playing called life. Bye.